Hero's Path. Just want to talk a little bit today about how did a honey badger get elected into the White House? Now you might be saying, what do you mean a honey badger? Donald Trump, if, you, if, you, if you've seen any of the videos on YouTube about honey badgers, they, there's this very funny phrase, the honey badgers don't give a shit, they take what they want. Somehow, every time I look, open up the, my phone and read the latest news thing, I, I see a honey badger at work in our current political climate. And I'm, I'm kind of sitting, I was thinking today, I was like, how did we get a honey badger in there? Because it seems like he's doing everything to dismantle and destroy what has come before. And I think we need to, instead of just judging or just saying, oh, he's crazy or people are stupid for electing him, let's do a more sophisticated look at history so we can understand the good cultural and sociological reasons for how a honey badger got in the Oval Office. All right. First, let's start with a brief view of history. This is a very condensed view of it, but I think it's helpful. If we're gonna understand how we got to where we are today or why so many people elected Donald Trump and still love him, let's look at history. Okay, brief thumbnail sketch. The world was created about four to five billion years ago, okay? Wow, that's a long time ago. So during this first phase of human history, this, this phase lasted a long time. If this, if this chart was actually correct, this phase would be really far, okay? So human-like creatures came into being between 200 million or 2 million to 100,000 years ago, according to science. So there's this whole tree of hominids that existed. And these are just different types of homo, there's homo erectus, which are like 2 million years old. There's Neanderthal, Neanderthals. And, and then there's their homo sapiens. We're actually probably one of the, the youngest on this branch, but we, we somehow survived. And the reason why we survived is our advanced ability to communicate, to think, and our ability with creativity and tools. But the biggest thing, and th this is the main thing I wanna drive home, is we were able, because of our brains and our upbringing, to create collective stories or myths that helped us to bond together, to rise above, and, and be the winner of this against our uh, cousins on this tree of life. We, we won out, whereas all these, these other folks who were similar to us, but not in our exact camp, have died out. And I think that's important for us to remember. We're not the first human-like creatures born. We're very young. The Homo erectus were around two million years. We're, we've been here like, like a couple hundred thousand years. Wow, it's crazy to think that way. And so, but at the origins of our humanity is violence. There's a lot of speculation that we ended up killing off our cousins so that we could get all the deer meat and all the, all the provisions. And there's also some, you know, climate theories as well, which is another important thing we'll get to is if you look over most of you know, species that have gone extinct, it's climate issues. Uh, and so we're kind of running into one of those right now and we'll get into why we're denying it as a culture. Um, so you fast forward through time, get in time machine, and you hit around 8,000 BC, you begin, you see the birth of agriculture. This was a, this was really the beginning of the next phase. You know, it's really hard to be throwing spears at your brothers when you have to, when you have land, you have plants on, you need to have ownership. And we as a, as a species began to move from tribes into civilizations. And to do that, we needed order, we needed hierarchy, we needed structure, top down. Um, and that's where, you know, civilizations came in. The first civilization was only, you know, 5,500 BC. The Western religions came in with a, with a bang about 4,000 years ago. Um, Buddhism was about uh, 5,000 years before Christ. So all these, across the world, there was this need for a religion, for a way to structure that collective myth versus everybody having their own little tribal myth. And that makes sense, we needed that. And so now, the value is not so much instinct and survival. We had advanced enough to say now it's law and order, morality. Now the fears were not going extinct. The fears were now punishment. So now as a, as a, as a species, we needed law and order. We needed reward and punishment to motivate us. We needed to learn to not just be like the badger and express ourselves to get what we want. Now we needed to sacrifice ourselves for future gain. And blood sacrifice was something that was seen as a noble, virtuous thing during this, during this time in history. So most of human history has been 
the badger versus the German shepherd. And the German shepherd is the animal that we'll use to symbolize the soldier. The German shepherd is an animal that wants to make master proud, wants, is willing to sacrifice and be loyal no matter what. And it really is motivated by, by reward and punishment and doesn't want to get in trouble, wants to be a good dog. And we needed this, this kind of, this is what Freud called the superego, and he called the id or the it, where we need to superimpose behaviors to change. We need to follow instinct, follow nature, okay? The, these two things. Now, this is going to be very important because with the rise of Trump, well, actually, first, let's go through history and we'll get to that, okay? Now, get back in that time machine. As the soldier phase is going along, we begin to see some splintering. We see lots of, lots of blood, lots of wars. And around 1517, we saw the Reformation hit. Now the Catholic Church has lost its power. Now there's the Protestant Church. And, and then after that, we see the, the birth of the Enlightenment. We also see 100 years of war, lots of blood there. Whenever we, we shift out of seasons of human development, there's always a lot of blood, always a lot of war. Um, and you fast forward again, the scientific revolution, wow, the beginnings of medicine, humanities, all these advances, uh, exploration. And then in 1859, we have the, we, Darwin comes in with this groundbreaking theory of evolution, changes the whole, it, all these, all the stuff here in this leader phase was, was kind of punching, punching in the stomach the soldier. Because it was just saying, this, it, it kind of deemed God not in the clouds above or hell in the earth below. It, it challenged a lot of that. It challenged a lot of these literal interpretations of scripture that, that the soldier held, that held society together. So he created a lot of uncertainty. And now instead of looking to an authoritative source, faith alone in a book alone or authority alone, now we look to reason alone. That was a big shift. Now we're going, I think, therefore I am. I think, therefore I know. And that this was the beginning of the, e the, the first time humanity began to have an ego, okay? We began to have a sense of self and a sense of, hey, I, you know, and during this phase, people began to say, maybe the Black Plague is not God punishing us. Maybe it's those filthy rats that are doing it. And people began to think for themselves as uh, individuals. And that was the birth of the lion, that I want to be the king of the jungle. I want to be, I want to make my own rules, right? And then we fast forward again. And we realized that this, this phase, this leader phase, this scientific phase, did not provide the myth that it promised. We couldn't capture everything through reason, objective thought alone. And so now there's a shift into more of a postmodern or a what we'll call the birth of the giver, where now people are beginning to realize that, you know, pure objective reason doesn't answer it. People began to realize that, you know, truth is subjective, holy cow. And then you know, we had some big hitters. We had Freud come in with the unconscious, changed everything. Now it's like, well, dang, is it, is it my past, whatever? Einstein came in with his quantum theory, changed everything, because at this point we thought that things just operate by mathematical principles. Everything was just could be measured. And then we have a bunch of upheaval. And during the giver, again, as we switch from leader to giver, we see the world wars. We see lots of blood again. We have a hard time transitioning through these phases. And it makes sense. So bottom line, and that, that was the birth of the golden retriever. So this was the birth of, because we had advanced so much, now we're really wanting love, wanting connection. Uh, we, we really want to be loved and connected, and we're looking for a way to, to get those needs met. So we have those four animals, okay? So let's get down to the analysis here. As, so with, so why did, why did Trump get elected? All right. Well, if you look at election cycles, it seems like about every eight years, there, there's a shift. It's like the way our democracy works, like a pendulum swinging. So we had Bush that led to Obama, that led to Trump. And so, and it's like all these, these are extreme movements of like kind of trying to counterbalance the other one. And, and with, with our latest, with, with Trump, with uh, Trump coming in, with Obama, we'll still start with Bush. So with Bush, he came in and was, you know, the Iraq war and he was bringing conservative values back, holding on to his evangelical Christian faith. And then that, that you know, using more of a blue approach didn't, didn't work, right? And then we were like, okay, now let's go to the green with Obama. He wants to, you know, accept everybody, give people health care, you know, really be more of a liberal presence and that, that, neglected people. So then with Trump, it's like people now were at a place where 
there's this whole section of people in the Rust Belt who were in this German Shepherd mode and where Clinton really messed up. And I, I'm still shocked today how in the world someone with that many resources and that much, you know, Ivy League kind of access could miss just the basic brute facts that most Americans are in the blue category. <laughs> and to think that you can pander to people who are in the green, more liberal states and just, and that you can use reason and, oh, we, we know we shouldn't go back there. That the people in this category were hurting. They were losing their jobs. They couldn't provide for their tribe. They, they felt like all the resources were given away to other people. So when you neglect and you forget our roots, okay, this is what we're getting at. The roots of our tribal background. Even if you look at the Old Testament, Trump is a lot like Jehovah in the Old Testament. He don't give a shit. He'll, he'll wipe you out. He don't care. But he, he'll be true to you if you're true to him. And the people were looking, thinking under this illusion that if they're good, if they work hard, they'll, they'll get rewarded. They'll get their, their treat at the end of the day. And Trump came in and he knew exactly how to, how to speak to, the, to this population. He even said it in interviews. He was like, I know, because he knew, and him and his team, him and uh, Steve Bannon, who actually Steve Bannon's nickname was, he was the honey badger. Um, and they came in and they crafted and they, they pulled the heartstrings of this. They spoke the exact right tribal dialect to these folks, pulling just the right cards. And it's almost like Trump could do whatever he wanted. And I think that was part of the genius of his, his election is he would do crazy shit all the time. And so we, all the liberals like, oh, he won't get elected. He's way too out there. But he, he pulled a couple cards, the abortion card, the you know, Supreme Court justice card. And because people who are in this category, which is 70% of people are, are blue red, Right, so there is a good reason why people are here. And the liberals and people who are more, oh, we're enlightened, we're Ivy League, whatever, or we're, we're more enlightened, of course we don't believe in, of course we believe in evolution, of course we believe that, you know, homosexuality is okay. Did not, this soldier piece, if we neglect it and we don't learn to honor it, we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. And, they held on to those, those cards of Trump for good reasons. And we see this played out in Europe today. Now, America is a young, young country. We're like 243 years, years old. Great Britain's like 2,000 years old, okay? Um, and so we're a baby country. And we see this in Europe right now, just a little anecdote. In Europe right now, there's actually a, an, an author named Douglas Murray. He wrote a book called The Strange Death of Europe. And Douglas is a Christian atheist. He's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. But he is a strong advocate for returning to our Christian roots, to our Christian story, and reinterpreting it. Because trying to find a myth to live by that is just rooted in this, in the shallow roots of science, is not what most people want. It's not fulfilling. It doesn't answer the big questions. And also just moving to the, to the flat land where, you know, there is no story, we're just here, we're just here to love, that also doesn't provide enough roots. And so in Europe, within a matter of 70 years, it's gone from Hitler, where he tried to kill everybody who wasn't German, to where now the doors have been opened, where now like, people can come in. And then 70 years, all that Christian guilt over what happened with the Holocaust has created a flat land. So what Douglas is saying is that, is that how do we answer life's existential issues without a story, without some story that, that provides us with answers, that provides us with, with, with a, collective, a collective group to work with. And I think that's what the Rust Belt, that's what got Trump elected is, is that. And if we're going to take back our country and begin to process of moving beyond these four different cultural phases. And we as people tend to gravitate towards different pockets of this. Trump, if you look at him, he is a, he is a, he is a tribal leader who is telling the soldiers, the, the golden retriever, I mean the, the, the shepherds, and also some of the golden retrievers liked him too, uh, that, hey, listen, I got it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of things. I'm, I'm gonna rework the things so that your needs are taken care of. And having a honey badger in, in, the, in the office made sense to them. And in a lot of ways, we needed someone who was, 
honey badger-esque in the office. If we had just another person just to continue pushing that, it could have pushed us more to where Europe, Europe is today. Now, the problem with, with either or is, is that when you just have a honey badger out, it's gonna destroy everything. And honey badgers are, are meant to be in the wild. And if you look at the way Trump thinks and the way he acts, there's almost no reason in the way he does things. He acts, he acts on impulse. And if you look at him from a psychological perspective, he mirrors the, that of a sociopath. Um, he has very little ability to empathize. He doesn't really give a shit about anything. And, and so I know people might say, well, that's not fair, but he, he really does. But, you know, if you, look at the, if you look at a literal interpretation of the God of the Old Testament, you would maybe think the same thing if you took it literally. And so, and at certain times in human history, to reestablish order, we needed sociopathic, totalitarian regime leaders to do that. Um, but how do we begin the process of bringing a sense of order to this? As we move forward, as we head towards this new election year, to be honest, I have no idea if Trump's going to win. Um, I think it, it depends largely on if the Democrats can actually come up with a solution that will address the the needs of this population and not pander over there and not think oh because trump's so crazy that we're good um because the the naivete of thinking that we are so evolved that we can transcend the badger and the german shepherds within us is just it's mind-blowing to me I, I think a better solution would be a a honoring of all the colors attempting to dialogue attempting to meet in the middle and attempting to find a way for us to, hey, let's let's continue moving forward and growing and not and not kill the climate, kill the pro, the you know our planet in the process, and also find ways for us to innovate and, and create jobs and and honor the survival needs without totally like giving away all of our money. You know, where we go into massive debt and it's tough because <clears throat> how do we?